another Poundland power bank, and this time it's the daddy of them all that comes in at five pounds. And this is called the awesome Power Geek 4000 milliamp hour power bank, available in fetching pink, as are many items from Poundland. So it comes with the charging lead, it comes with instructions. I've not read the instructions, I really do. Uh, this unit, I have tested it. So the 4000 milliamp hour capacity, I tested it and it came up. I charged and discharged, it came up, up at 3.3 amp hour, so not quite the rated capacity, unless it's actually using a, reg a regulator, an actual switch on power supply to charge the bank of batteries in here from the... Uh, charging port, and I say bank of batteries because if you hold a bright light under this, you can clearly see three what look like 18650s inside. It's got a power level meter on it with the LEDs, four LEDs. Excuse me, one moment. <coughs> there we go. And it's got a LED here, double click lights the LED, useful enough, quite a handy function. So when you test this, it's rated to charge at one amp, which it does. And it's rated to put out up to one amp, uh, which it also does. Let me plug this in and demonstrate that. So I'm going to plug in my load here. I'm going to zoom down so you can actually see this. And oop, I shall reset it down. So if I go up to 1.48, oh, 1 it's well and truly dipped. If I go up to about... This uh, meter displays it, it updates so slowly, it's quite annoying actually. I can go up to about 1.2 on this before the voltage starts dipping. So it's at 1.2, 1 1.24, the voltage is holding at 5 volts. But if I go any further, the voltage starts falling down from that point. Yeah, it's, it's quite a sudden fall off at that point. But uh, that is only rated for an amp, so it does fulfill its amp output. I think we should open it. Oh, before I open it, another nice feature here. This uh, unit puts out 5 volts all the time. It doesn't do that thing you've got to wake it up, or when you plug a load in, it wakes up and it uh, and uh, then it sort of puts out the full 5 volts. If you plug in a very low load, like uh, a string of LED lights that only draws about 20 milliamps, this will happily continually power that at 5 volts with an interesting quirk. See how this is turned off after the time delay? If I used to plug the 20 milliamp load in now, it would not wake it up, but it would still run at 5 volts. If I wake it up and then plug the load in, it will stay awake with that because it can sense that small load, but only when it's awake. Okay, that's interesting. Let's, uh, let's see how this comes apart. If I can get it apart easily. I've, I've not opened one of these, so oh, this looks promising. Going in at the rear end here. It'll be good if this does open in a convenient manner, which it does look like it's doing. Will it be reclosable? Because if it is, it may actually be quite a good uh, case. Right. So here are the cells, and it says on the cells, rather optimistically, it says 1350 milliamp hour. Um, the little chip in there, oh look, it's got proper protection and everything. Can I get this out? Is it glued in? No, it's not glued in. Let's whip the whole lot out. There's a wee button. There's the four LEDs. They've got some glue to hold the batteries in. I did notice that uh, there's this big void at the bottom of the case. I wonder why. It's just, they could have made it so much shorter. Uh, I wonder why they've got that void. Unless it's designed to take a large rectangular battery as well, but I don't think it is. Um, I'm guessing that the two output ports are probably in parallel. Uh, right, tell you what, I'm going to pause. I'm going to uh, just take a note of the component numbers on this, and then we'll explore it in more detail. One little bit of analysis later, and I've taken a picture of the circuit board here so we can take a closer look at it. The chip is an SY3511D. I couldn't find the actual PDF data sheet. I found one site that claimed to have it. It wouldn't download. Uh, I did find it on a sales site, but it wasn't actually a downloadable data sheet. It was just part of the page of the sales site, so I nicked an image of it which is basically the schematic of how it's used. So this uh, chip does have the little metal pad underneath for heat sinking, and it's interesting to note that when I loaded it up at oh, about uh, 1.2 amps, 
and use the thermal imaging camera on it. The hottest component here, the inductor was getting a bit warm, but the chip's the hottest bit because it's doing all the work there, uh, and it got to 69 degrees Celsius, which is actually okay. That's not too bad at all. When I was charging it, the chip was doing all the... It was using the uh, linear current regulation to limit the charge into the battery. So it was the only component getting sort of hot on the board because it was acting like a variable resistor in series with the battery for the charging. However, while this is a fairly standard schematic, and I'm pretty sure we've seen this chip recently, I'm pretty sure recently we were looking at something uh, with this same arrangement of four LEDs and this... Um, it must have been the same chip or one under a different name. So, interesting things to note here. It is pretty much as the schematic shows here. It's got the inductor, it's got the, uh, the little, well, the main, the USB came in, has a filter across it, one ohm, one microfarad. And that's, uh, where is that, where is that? There's the one ohm and there's the, the capacitor across the input from the micro USB connector. Other things, the inductor has a little snubber network, 0.5 ohm, and the capacitor, and then there's a lot of extra stuff. Instead of just like being the 10 microfarad capacitor across the output, they've got a local capacitor across this output. They've got another one across this. They've got a bunch of capacitors here across this battery supply. And also, and this is really impressive, the output of the chip, uh, which is this pin here, has a capacitor to ground, uh, and then it's got a filter, a small inductor, and then another capacitor, so quite significant filtering the output of this. And then they go one step further. They're not just relying on the chip to protect the battery here. They have included a DW01 and the dual MOSFET package with all the support components associated with that, with the, the 100 ohm resistor and the capacitor for uh, the monitoring of the battery. It acts like a small filter, so it, with the pulses as the battery is being discharged, don't disrupt the sort of voltage threshold reading. And then the 1K resistor over here that is part of the overload detection. If the, something happens and it gets shorted out, it will automatically disconnect the battery until that short is cleared. So it's actually really quite good. The other thing here, the LED with its 330, uh, 33 ohm resistor in series, that is easy to change if you want to change the LED to a colour you prefer. Other things where they've noted here then, the case. The case was quite easy to get apart, uh, and it's not scuffed up in the process. So when you're opening it, uh, leaving it at the end, just getting your spudger into the end of the case here seems to be the way to go for uh, starting it, and then just carefully going up the sides, making sure you don't stab the batteries. The batteries, I'm not sure about. It does say 1,350 milliamp hour, but I didn't get that. I got about 1.1 amp hour. And people say, well, maybe they're just off spec or maybe they're reconditioned, recycled batteries. And if they were recycled batteries, if they're taken out of other equipment, they are all matched by the look of it. Then I wouldn't actually have a problem with that because they've still got plenty of capacity for an application like this. So let's see how well this goes back in is an important thing too. So let's, uh, the hardest bit is usually sitting this bit in here. Oh, it actually went in quite easily. Oh, it went in very easily. And the battery sit up like this. So far, so good. And will the case clip on quite easily? This end with the little indent here. Uh, these appear to be hold the, to hold the circuit board down. This uh, is a re-shroud around the LED. Will it clip together? Uh, well, if you lay the wires in correctly, yes, it will clip in. Yeah, so this is openable and closable. You can open this and put your own batteries in, and to all intents and purposes, looking at it, the chip doesn't overheat when it's putting its one amp output. It's always putting five volts out, and uh, it's got that nice extra feature that it's got that extra battery protection and filtering. So, you know, actually, this is quite surprising. It looks pretty good indeed.